Let's see if it's streaming. If so, hello and welcome to London on Sim 1 server, not Pro Mod tonight. Sim 1, we're currently at the Volvo dealership. I'm just going to change uh, the plate server. Y'all walk. Yep, it's streaming. Uh, make sure I've got audio. I appear to have audio. Right, okay, so here I am. This is my Volvo. It's a uh, FH16, 750 horses. <laughs> Whilst we're in London, let's see where the uh, where we've got to go to get our trailer, which is that. Just, uh, st uh, stiffness up a touch. It's bloody slack. Uh, internal friction tail about there. Don't need to be quite so loose. That's more like it. So what we're gonna do today, we are gonna be doing some container work around the UK and possibly into you're from here. Strange driving on Sim 1 server. Hello, cat, how are you? I am on Sim 1 server today if you want to join. I'm just going now to pick up my trailer, which is in my yard in London. Norman Foster's Gherkin. Look like something else above the skyscraper. do in a second. Right, trailer manager. I've just had an email. What's that email? What's that email? What the hell was all that about? Oh, my albums have been shipped. Hey! <laughs> Got some music coming. <laughs> She'll arrive Monday. Lovely. Right, now, one of my, uh, is it that container carrier? 
Yeah, that's the one. Use. Right. So, what have we got available? Hello, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. Have I tried out the buses? Yes, it's like driving a vacuum cleaner. Really? I'm driving a Zanussi. <laughs> Tell what they break well. Hello, Shilla. How you doing? Feel free. I don't bite most of the time. Uh, spend a lot of my time doing uh, container work, driving either a Volvo or a Scania, uh, this, that and the other. So today we'll be staying probably around here, or maybe sort of this area here. I will not be going anywhere down here. No. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> so our first job will be uh, some... No. No, Manchester, Plastics, Sheffield, Roscoff, Le Havre. That still takes me through France, don't want that. Rotterdam, again, that's probably going to try and take me down uh, through France. But I can avoid that. I like to feel here at least something else, then you know what the engines are doing. Yeah, nothing worse than driving a vehicle that should have noise but doesn't have noise because when something has something but uh, doesn't have something but should usually means there's a problem. Right, and motor oil. Tell you what, we'll take first job. We'll take some filter to uh, Transinet, shall we? This is me Volvo for, for the moment. I've got some uh, couple of skins as well on uh, Steam Workshop. These being for this very truck. Now, yeah, so I do like I do like my engine noise. As long as it's not too intrusive. over a million kilometers so a million miles 1.6 million uh, kilometers <laughs> on an 11 plate truck the highway code. But also as well, uh, there's a bottle at the driving for driving theory. Uh, the official DBSA theory test. Get that book. Study it. Study it well. I've got the version that's for uh, heavy goods vehicles. 
because I got it when I was taking my test. It's Perception was uh, second, second time, and the theory was first time. I made a fuck up that. I made a proper fuck up on that. Pretty sure as well that the DVSA might have a YouTube channel as well. Let's just have a look, shall we? Let's have, pause me quickly. Pause that. Go and open up YouTube. I wonder. DVSA. Yes, the DVSA has a YouTube video. We carry out driving tests and approve people to be driving instructors. Yeah, they do actually have the, uh, what's it? So, might be worth watching some of their videos. I mean, most of it is uh, to do with, I mean, you've got the Theory Test Official Guide. In fact, I will uh, pull those up for you now as I open up. Open again, you tab. D V S A. Uh, right. Copy. Hello, oh, JT. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? I'm on uh, Sim 1 today. But, cats, this should help you a lot. That channel. If you have a look up there, you'll see what it's, uh, what it's all about. Right. Here's my container, all nicely secured. Of, uh, as well, completely legal now with the correct license plate front and rear. Although, do I really need my top deflector on this truck? <laughs> Probably not. Right, I uh, just need to make a couple of changes. Uh, one is to the. Uh, what's I going to change? Yeah, the fenders. So I'll change those. <laughs> Proper fenders on. Good, good, good. I know they said there was a heat wave coming, but today's been relatively cool and it doesn't like the last half hour. It's, just, it's got warm. Stock Volvo F860. 
No mods on it because it's off TMP, so. So I'll make a couple of changes to this. Uh, I'm having to wear headphones now as well, which is like, uh, sticky and sweaty. Uh, <laughs> my headphones are sticking to my head. The, uh, we've got concrete slabs on the pavement, so it's not too bad. But where we used to live, the uh, in the same city, the replaced all the flagstones on the uh, pavement with tarmac. And so, if you're a dog or a cat walking on um, Bare fucking tarmac. Must be really bad. Yeah, our Jack Russell lot we've got. We've got a st uh, temporarily. We've got a staff here as well, which we're dog sitting for a bit. Um, trying to get the staff to go outside. Like, nope, nope. Uh, Jack Russell comes and goes when she wants. You know, she'll go inside and. Go outside, come back, go inside the yard. You know, she's relatively okay with it, but she's like, Come here, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's calling. Oh, the two leg is calling me. Can't be asked. <laughs> Want a biscuit? She look like, he like, looks at me, he's like, and You'll see, see a little tail go tap, 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 tap. He's like, can't be asked. <laughs> I can imagine. Right. Um, it's my sister's family pet. But their landlord was decided to get out of the property letting uh, business. So sold the house. So basically they had to move out. So they moved in with her boyfriend's parents. Uh, obviously, there's my sister, my sister's boyfriend, and the two kids. They said no to the dog. We can have you, we can have the kids, but we can't have the dog. So the plan is for uh, them to get a new house on a uh, council house. And once they got a, a a house, they have the dog back. That's all. Dog sitting. And he is absolutely fucking out mental. He's crazy. He's just a crazy stuffy. So if you want him, come and have him. <laughs> Right, let's go to Cambridge, shall we?
<laughs> yeah. Gets a bit interesting when you've got that many dogs. Although, eventually, Ricky will be going back with his sister. When Callie um, passes on, which is he's old now, Callie is. Probably have a cat. too bad but Ricky after he has his dinner Vladimir Putin find out you got all your chemical weapons. Fucking hell. <laughs> He'll have it. He'll have the dog and stick a pipe up his arse and try to tap the contents off. Jeez. Your atomic farts. Deutschland, I like Hitler, Hitler. Yeah, 1887, perhaps that's not the best thing to say on this server, mm. okay? Mm. You do like, like Hitler? Let's not discuss that on this server, thank you. What, man? Don't discuss that kind of things on the server, thank you. He did say he likes Hitler, didn't he? Dog I remember coming back from uh, North Wales with uh, Bonnie, old Jack Russell, we saw many, many years ago. But she was, uh, must have had an off day. Fucking hell. You trying to gas us? They were silent. God, they were deadly. Why at the bottom of the fort while the cars are just... Hitler? Yeah. I like Hitler. I swear that's what he said.
around the UK today. It's like driving around during the uh, 2020 lockdown, but there's nobody on the road apart from commercial workers. Which is absolutely... It's unrealistic, to say the least. about their daily business. Car drivers going in there. So it needs AI traffic. I think I might do next next week a convoy mode server. With a couple of uh, just chuck a couple of mods on and go from there. long now as well before we get uh, the Balkans. Right. Now, you see over there where you've got that um, Transinet trailer? What's a high XP uh, loading be by those office windows? Which is like there. Let's have a look. I told you. How are you going to offload the stuff? Through the office window? So we'll go there, shall we? Come down the ramp with the bloody floor load. Four wheeler today, so let's see what there is. Let's see what keeps it in the UK. Calais, Calais, Manchester, Swansea, uh, 
Duisburg, no thank you. Milan or Parma. Actually, you know what? Shall we go to Italy? Let's see what's on the external market. France. JCO in France. That takes us down through there then into the island there. Uh, yeah, why not? Well, if we go to cargo market, let's see Palmer. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll take that, I think. And what we got to do, we got to go down, and we got to go down through Spain. Uh, to miss out. Now, where are, are we going to go? Put the truck on the bay. It's there. First bank. So we're quite quite tight here to get on. So through Calais, pretty much guaranteed it's got to be an absolute uh, shit show, because that's what Calais is like in this game. So if I can avoid it, brilliant. But if those containers weren't there. And we're now loaded. Right, Costco container by the looks of it. I was reckoned that's probably a new profile. You know, somebody with not much money. 
because there's absolutely no tuning on that daft whatsoever. Horizon, you want a new profile? Not Sixteen twenty four, uh, you want a new profile? Probably in the jobs listing. I'm sorry. Right, so. <laughs> Ten sixty six, Battle of Hastings. Right, let's go to uh So it wants us now to go down there. However, we're going to there. So what we could do, in fact, what we're going to do, is go via Plymouth. That's the way we're going to go. It avoids all of this crap here that goes on. Because where we enter uh, France, it's all base map content. DLCs and just bought the game for £1.50. I probably can't drive that truck. <laughs> so we've got to go this way. Now, if I remember rightly, because uh, we get to Corsica. I think Corsica, I think this might be from where Napoleon Bonaparte came from. Although, he's actually buried in St. Helena. Which is a tiny little island of, uh, out in the middle of the, uh, of the Atlantic. Well, if you really want to go completely out of the way, you've got uh, what stay on the UK territory. You've got Pitcairn Islands. And you've also as well got Tristan de Kuna. Tristan de Kuna is basically you, you have a small settlement called New Edinburgh. And that's it. Clinging to the slides of a slope of an active volcano. Which in uh, the 1960s, I think it was, erupted. That's good to the new XG as well. Decent M25, go to Pro Ones. Because the two tunnels are on the back along with the, uh, the Queen Elizabeth Bridge. Well, go. 
Tasmania. I think two islands used to be uh, Ital both of these I think used to be Italian controlled, although don't quote me on that. There's a lot of the names in um, Corsica. Seem to sound very Italian. Like Ajaccio. Bonifacio. Italian names. Don't be surprised if Napoleon Bonaparte was responsible. Right. Let's steal these islands off the Italian off the Italians. Well, we have it those. So we'll see what happens. Have a good evening. Well, that's my job. That's my job as a YouTube streamer to entertain people. Have a good one. Park. That sits. Oh, maybe we should have. Never mind. We'll go this way instead. Run down the coast road. People you see as well driving 8x4 Scania, uh, Scania's Volvos and MANs of regular cargo work. Then you'll, you'll pick up a low loader. What do you do then? They swap it with an 8x4 to a 4x2. Why? Do it the other way around. Or you'll, you'll pull an 8x4 with a single axle trailer because you can't get in with a, full, with a full length trailer. Somebody who comes along with a normal truck, like a 6x4 or a 6x2 or a 4x2, with a full length trailer, getting in that gap that they were struggling, and I was like, How do you get that there? Hacker! I've got nothing to do with that, just choose the right tool for the job. Well, that's all it is. It's right. Pick the right trucks to do the uh, to do the work. And you'll get in that gap every time. Pretty much guaranteed. And then you'll sit along as well. You'll be racing along 110 kilometers per hour. And be unable to stop. Why? When they get uh, people bad? <laughs> I couldn't see him until the very last minute. We'll slow the fuck down then. Like rocket science. Speaking about rocket science, I think SpaceX are a little bit further with their rocket plan, their Starship. Elon Musk plans on sending people to Mars. Why the hell would you want to go there? Knowing that you probably won't get back.
two people in the space of five minutes and over 110 k's. One doing over 100 k's, one doing 106, one doing 110. Give it to real miles and you'll get, you'll be full better off. You also have less accidents. But, you know, nothing so strange as people. Although no one's so quite so strange as Elon Musk. I think, I think um, money has got to his head. I think he's a, I think he's the world's richest person, I think. More money than some. I mean, he's got that much money. I think he's got more money than some small countries. Somebody uh, have a look at uh, Elon Musk's wealth versus the country's GDP. I wouldn't be surprised why he's got uh, more money than like, the state of Michigan. I mean, what's he got? Why he got that much money? What the hell do you do with it? an obscene amount of cash. Well, PayPal and SpaceX, Tesla, without making that making there as rich as he is. Yes, I am. Yeah, it is. Well, when you got a truck as pimped out as this, you don't need a 420, are you? Come on. <laughs> well, all because you got a 750 doesn't mean to say that I have to rag it everywhere. Nice and steady. And it keeps the thing is, it keeps the journey times down because you can accelerate quicker and hold the speed quicker. Right, so 29.1 billion net worth. $291 billion. I bet that's more money than the GDP of Luxembourg. as well, uh, Rachel, this is, uh, this profile I'm on now, was the profile that I set up Eurotruck Simulator 2 when I brought the game, when it first came out. Because I've got 42.6 uh, million crown. I might convert that to euros later on. This is a serious amount of money. Absolutely ridiculous amount of cash. I mean, by the time I get to where I've got to go, I mean, I've probably made more money than some profiles. Some of these people, they, they rip around all the time. They have to use money cheats. Once you got AI drivers, your money starts rolling in. 
Secondly, tidal wave catch. Basic Volvo F816. Nothing overly fancy about it. Pop the paint job and the chrome and the uh, the low slung exhaust and all the DLC tuning parts. But, uh, what are the trucks I have? Volvo, 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 <laughs> and the odd daft. When I get to my next stop, I'll show you pretty much what I've got. It's nearly all Volvo F80s on this profile. Both this one and the, uh, the other one. Five is nice. The 106, less so. I'm not overly keen on the 106. But I think SCS could have done better with it. Let's show you what I've got. I've got a couple of Renault Magnums on this fleet. Renault Premium. What's actually on? Uh, truck manager. Okay, I have got 43 Volvos, I've got some Iveco Highways, uh, some more Volvo FHEs, a 105, classic, and another highway. Uh, yeah, bright orange. Yeah, that's so old. That's the original um, wheel set. Because this truck was purchased before we had the wheel tube. Where am I going? I am going to a Jazzio in Corsica. You know, got a few Iveco highways. These are like my. Um, I might dig one of those out at some point. MENTGX. Actros. Got a few of those. A couple of Magnums. A few premiums. Although there's nothing premium about the premium. A range, couple of range T's. Right, clear all that. Yeah, that's actually missing a skin that I temp I made, because it's uh, the skin belongs on. Uh, how much trucks do I actually have? Uh, 
Let's see, shall we? On this profile, 288. And most of them have got drivers. Well, I've got those without drivers, so I don't think. And oh, I've got some drivers, high driver. Uh, Bergen. Put me on that. Uh, driver, you can go in Bergen as well. In fact, it looks like they've added more drivers since I've actually look, had a look at the. Uh... Right. Let's see, I've got all the trucks without. Uh... That's got profile. Oh. There we are. Right. Back to it. Back to the plot, what the little of it there is. Now, I think what SES did when they made these Volvos, they should have put the uh, fenders a little bit lower down. Put the fe uh, fifth wheel a little bit further up. Right now, it's actually really not the day. Oh, I might take those lights off, actually. Got, uh, how far did I go? Doesn't say. So we'll, we'll make our way towards uh, Plymouth, hop on the ferry to Santander or uh, Bilbao, and then it's a blast down to Barcelona. And then once we get to Barcelona, it's across the water to. Sardinia, then up into Corsica. That we will probably do today, actually. Rushing. <laughs> See the point? It's a nice steady drive down a nice, relatively busy server. Was updated in England a couple of patches ago. They ripped out. And I think this particular road is one of the nicest, uh, nicest roads on the uh, on the old UK map. It's runs along the coast down towards Plymouth. That is the Dutch coast. Actually. everything else it's uh, everything you know, you've got to update everything although I'm looking forward to the Balkans when the Balkans come I might spend some time driving around Albania which is a 
very strange, little, strange little country. Former Soviet state. The, uh, the former dictator of Albania was paranoid. I mean, he was actually frightened of everybody. Even his own people. Frightened of the West, frightened of Russia. Thought that everybody was out to nuke him, so he built like, loads of little uh, emplacement towers all over the country, little mushroom shapes there. But Cities that could should give us Stoke on Trent because it's the home of the UK pottery industry. You know, it's the home where Reginald Mitchell came from. And if you go up um, Sandyford or Sandyford Fire Station up the A50, there's two um, roads on the RJ Mitchell Way and two embankments. Got on one of them, there's a concrete plinth or slab of concrete. Ah, cheers, Rachel. I'll probably have a look at your channel later on as uh, Chuck and Return. Yeah, there's nearly all trucking content, there's occasionally the other video as well. I can throw it. Yeah, there's a concrete silhouette of a Supermarine Spitfire and a Supermarine Walrus. If you go to Longton, there's a memorial tomb in the Bennett Precinct. I think there's also a couple of memorials on up in uh, Hadley as well. In Hadley Museum, there's also a Spitfire. Got Wedgwood Pottery. The headquarters is um, not too far from where I live actually. About 15 minute drive, something like that. Well, just 
close down the road in Toxeter. More correctly, Roaster. You've got the home of JCB. Where you made all the, um, the diggers. I'll still do. We had the Garden Festival here a few years ago. I think it was one of the last ones I have here. But you go up uh, towards Yorkshire as well, you've got Filingdales. Filingdales, the uh, like radar antennas, of which there's also one up at uh, Saxon Ford. Doesn't really make any delivery point, but it's certainly a nice uh, scenic item to have on the motorway. Have on the map, sorry. And Filingdales, you can see from the motorway. Up the M62 as well, you've got uh, the big dam by the river. It does not, uh, yeah, it has a switch gate in the middle of it. It's going to be sure, sure, but SES and model it with one of those Fabergé egg things over there. It is not like that. We have no water towers in the UK. Stars like those Fabergé eggs. I don't know where they got that prop from. Historic dockyards, HMS Victory, uh, HMS Warrior, HMS Onyx. No, Onyx, sorry, it's Alliance. Onyx was one that used to be in uh, Liverpool that's been, uh, it's been cut up. You've got Liverpool with uh, the various things I can have there. Like Easter eggs like the Beatles Museum. country that could make the make it the UK worth actually driving round. But if you go to Graz in Austria near RKW, you've got the Arnold Schwarzenegger's house. That's one that they use on the M62. And they still haven't actually finished this goddamn bridge! Also as well, as you go up the M1, there's a tunnel on the M1 in this game. Now I've travelled the M1 from London all the way up to Leeds, to where it joins the A1. There is no tunnel! As you come down the M5 as well. I've driven the entire length of the M5. There's no tunnel on that map, on that motorway either. So where do you get these ideas from? I have no idea.
kind of updated from area as well, the uh, logo, but they've left the ones on the old buildings the same as the old logo. Let's touch that. I'm going to park up at the ferry port because I want to go downstairs, get myself a cup of tea made and as well get myself some to eat. Also, the as well the same Saturday that um, is a sacred day in Japan. Tab out. I'll just check the calendar for a second. One, two, three. Yeah. Uh, not next Saturday, not the Saturday after, but the Saturday after that, which is August the 6th. So double check the. Uh, yeah. 6th and 7th of uh, August. That weekend, there will be no stream. Because I will be, that Saturday, I will be in Scotland for the day. At least that's the plan, anyway. Because that's a truck show. Right, okay, it's coffee time. So, let's, I will be back in about five minutes. Taco break.
Aye, it is a bonnie Scotland, and it's about six hours for me to get there by car. I'm doing it straight after work. <laughs> Start my shift. Do my shift. Get home. Get changed. In my car. Then. Straight north. So it'll be a long day. But. It'll be worth it. Now we go. Now we're crossing Spain. That is an old pick. So, that's what I think about the original time. Chuck a sub back to your H, but <laughs> apparently you've got no videos yet. Never mind. One thing is, though, um, JT, Scotland is an absolutely beautiful place. I'm mean, sure uh, a certain wing of their government on Scottish independence. Well, I'm not surprised. Because London treats them with a complete contempt. Mind you, London treats anywhere outside the M25 with utter contempt. It was like, oh, where are you from? Oh, you're from uh, Birmingham. Oh, you must be poor working class then. Poverty and uh, in London, no poverty in London. It's all it's got the highest GDP in all the country. There's no poverty in London. Moggy, open your fucking eyes. <laughs> There's some really badly deprived areas. Taxis, they don't give a fuck. And the thing is, though, JT, I think you'll you'll get independence the way things are going. You'll certainly uh, Sturgeon will force the um, referendum through. Boris, uh, Conservative Party, will go no. Blackfoot in London, uh, Ian Blackfoot. He will go, yes. I think you will actually, eventually, you will get Scottish independence. And if you do, good luck to him. Because I think after the Scotland gets independence, I think it'll spur on the, uh, the Ar Northern Irish to go independent. And then, 
the Welsh. United Kingdom. <laughs> now, this is why I should be leader of the Conservative Party, leader of the Labour Party, leader of the Liberal Democrat Party, because I screwed up the country. <laughs> yeah, then what? People's Republic. Yeah, and then what? The People's Republic of Yorkshire? <laughs> Eventually, from that, from that comment of yours, and replace it with soon, and you'll probably be more, um, more accurate. Give it two years, Scotland will probably uh, be an independent nation. I reckon two years. Then the Irish will follow very, very soon after us. I reckon by 2030 there will be an independent Scotland and a unified Ireland. Wales will probably still be hanging on. But if the way things are going on by 2040. with him. He does not mince his words, he says it how it is. He speaks his mind. And he's not afraid to, uh, to offend people. I mean, let's bring in Brexit. It was sold to us on a lie. I cannot see the benefits. country has imposed sanctions on two countries in the last 10 years. Great Britain and Russia. Opposing, uh, putting on, uh, oh Boris. <laughs> He's a cunt. I don't like him. He's got no respect for the law, no respect for authority, no respect, just no respect. I mean, when I was... <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, if you think somebody in Parliament is lying, that's it. The right honourable gentleman over there is He's telling a complete blatant falsehood. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, he's... And he would make a, I think he would actually make a good Prime Minister. I mean, I joined the Liberal Dem uh, Lib Dems after uh, bloody Brexit after Brexit to try and turn this fucking madness around. Because I voted to remain 
Not because I love Europe. Not because I love the Strasbourg government. I can foresee the shit show that we're gonna get. Because, quite frankly, when we are that intertwined with Europe, leaving it ain't gonna be easy. All I can say is, like, fuck, we're not in Europe. <laughs> so we would have problems. Well, you know, you're about, about uh, let's take control back of our wars, our money, and our borders. Well, we have control of our money because we're not in the euro. And to some degree, we've not had any bailout loans off you. So we've got control of our money. Well, let's take control of our borders. Because there's too many black and brown people coming to this country from overseas, the Far East. And we can't keep them in this country, can't stop them coming here because of Brussels. False. In fact, if you are a European national and you go to Germany to work, and you don't find work in three months, you go back to where you came from. Well, you're French, Spanish, Italian. So, we had control of our borders because the people who were being sold as the, uh, by us as the problem by the papers, a lot of them weren't even coming in Europe. So, we had control of our borders. Not only that, we were not in Schengen. Still have control of our borders. Oh, but there's too many illegals coming in this country. We need to stop them. But we can't stop them because of Europe. False sod. You can deport them back to where they came from. Simply so. Well, what about all these laws that um, Europe, Europe is bringing in? that we need to stop. We had the opt-out. Negotiators by Margaret Thatcher. So if a law didn't particularly apply to us, like for example the wine growing industry, we got, we got wines, wine, wine growing as such, that law didn't apply. It applied to France, it applied to Spain, to some degrees it applied to Italy, because obviously Italian wines. But we didn't have any industry that that law applies to, so we could opt out of it. We had control! Yeah, so that's what it was all boils down to. The press and the government politicians whipping it up and telling us a load of bullshit. Sending uh, people back to Rwanda because they've got uh, legal immigrants. They've come over. Uh, no, no, no. That's just wrong. That's just completely wrong. Some of those people have got legitimate claims to asylum. We send them back to Rwanda. You gotta make it hard for them to get back over here. Yeah. People traffickers. Deal with the traffickers. Not the people who are being trafficked. Deal with the traffickers. The people who persuade people to go climb to the back of lorries. absolute fortune of uh, people and stick them on small unseaworthy rubber boats. Deal with them people. 
Change our foreign policy. UN conventions. But the person who came up with the idea is an immigrant herself, Pretty Patel. And she's not originally from this country. You know, her family is not originally from this country. She should know better. Boris and Patel think they are. Beauty and Lavrov? Now, let's try and work out why they're coming here and see if we can, as a country, can deal with that issue. Now, because if they're coming over from Nigeria, there has to be a reason why they're coming over here. Jobs is the economy. And some of them are economic migrants. Some of them are fleet wars. And Rwanda. A few years ago we had a civil war and a genocide in that country. It's not exactly the same as place to go. It wasn't going to work in the first place. 
we signed the, signed the deal anyway, now we're trying to wheel out on it. And that's only going to cause more trouble, more tension in Belfast. It's not what you want to do. We don't, we shouldn't have a border between Holyhead and Belfast because that's like putting a border between Calais and Paris. Roman Naples or football or what was it? Uh, Ajaccio and Marseille. Cagliari in Italy, well on Sardinia and Naples. gets loud enough and already Sinn Féin are getting very very popular over there even amongst unionists because it's not now protocol because you want to go to places like uh, stuff like Tesco where you want to buy groceries Get British goods. All the only stuff that you can seem to get in Northern Ireland right now, for the uh, BBC and the proper press are to be bought. Dubious at best. It's coming from the south. Because a lot of places aren't shipping to Northern Ireland because of all the paperwork involved. I, mean, I work in the haulage industry. The paperwork that you need to carry from for a load. I mean, if you've got a truck like this, you can probably get about 20 pallets in the back of that trailer. 20, 24 pallets. Something like that. And if each one of those is going to a different destination, you can see them on each one of those pallets. CMR is basically it's a customs flow. And if on that pallet there are 24 boxes going to 24 different locations within Europe, it's like that, it's like um, CDs uh, sold by Amazon, and DVDs and the likes, they all go to different customers throughout uh, in France. That's 24 CMRs, you need one for every box. Six years ago, you didn't need any of that. And apparently that's... Having all these CMRs, is that frictionless, right? You shitting me? goods to Europe. But then you're coming the other way. You know, Spanish apples, Spanish bananas. It's getting to the point where I'm seeing less and less European trucks on the roads. They're just not coming here. I mean, some might think that's a good thing because uh, the standard of driving may not be that great compared to here. But it goes both ways. You know, you've got your British drivers sending produce to Europe, and that produce isn't going there now. What's happened to all those businesses who sold primarily to uh, to Europe?
vale, então vá, 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 Illegals breaking into the trucks. You can get your free ride in this country. Well, that's always going to be a risk anyway. But remove the illegals from the equation. So there's no illegal immigrants from this country. It's, you know, it's not really relevant to that. But let's deal with the customs. Sainsbury's, Tesco, and all some other frozen foods uh, distributors. And it's going to be out of delay with out of de delivery window. It's going to be spoiled. So it's going to get rejected. And then you got the uh, the car industry working on just in time. That's another thing that uh, removal of ourselves from the European Union has fucked up. Yeah, that's why I voted to remain in the European Union. It's the simple economics of it. If we were still in the European now and the uh, referendum was tomorrow, I would still vote remain. But what will I say? What what we need in this country are some good old school. Politicians. Boris is new school and is one with uh, very much lack of respect. The other thing is, I cannot think of a conservative politician with scruples of respect. Barcelona already. Fuck it out. We sent three billion over there per week. We got two billion back. So all this uh, money that was... Oh, we can save all this money for the NHS. Where the fuck's it gone? That is an ugly ship. That is ugly. <laughs>
Yeah. I remember as a child when Prime Minister's Quest used to be twice a week, 2.15 meet sessions. And Maggie Thatcher was there and she was going on with the O'Kinnick. There was none of this resorting to petty remarks like Captain Hindsight. Yeah, you know, there was none of that. Maggie would treat the opposition with respect. Neil Kinnock, as much as he hated Maggie Thatcher's guts, would treat Maggie with respect. To some degree, same with Tony Blair and John Major. Yeah, you know, they would treat the opposition with respect. They would get respect back. Yeah. You know, the Liberal SDLP uh, Social Democratic Liberal Democrat Party or SDLP Liberal Lives or whatever you were called back in the day. Again, they would have respect for everybody else in the house. There's none of that now. Absolutely none. And that's where part of the problem is. Nobody's got respect in that chamber. Not even for... Not even... For the Speaker of the House. And to have no respect for the Speaker, that is a cardinal sin. When Boris said something uh, to Prime Minister Questions a couple of months ago, accusing uh, Keir Starmer of protecting Jimmy Savile, that he was the, uh, by not pushing for a prosecution. See, so basically, he's accusing him of uh, protecting kitty pillars. Well, that's a no-no for a start-off. Although, that's to be expected from Boris. If he can't have his own way, he retorts to uh, petty insults. Stop for red lights, buddy. Okay. There you go. And that, the House of Commons, less so the House of Lords, but the House of Commons especially, needs a damn good kick. Daddy skin and the beast of Bolsover. We refer to um, David Cameron as Dodgy Dave. That really wasn't on. I mean, sure, Daddy Skinner was working class. was Dennis. I mean, and when he became, uh, yeah, that's why I refer to Prime Minister's questions as, I've got to listen to Play School. Yeah, if you remember the kids TV show from, uh, like the 1980s, there used to be a children's program called Play School. Yeah, that's, the House of Commons, right? And if you tune in to, I mean, does he, you elect these guys. 
to be your representatives. You tune in to uh, ask you know, Prime Minister's questions or whatever on Parliament Channel, and you hear that. It doesn't exactly paint a great light on the British Parliament. As much as I dislike Vladimir Putin because of what he's doing over in uh, Ukraine right now, it has to be said, he is more of a statesman than Boris. At least he has the, um, the way of words to show respect to the other to the people to the other politicians in the Duma. Oh, that is good. That is neat. I like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because he's an old school. He's he's an old school politician. I mean, he's a former KGB guy, which makes him he, he just. Well, untrustworthy to say the least. Yeah. I mean, populist politicians, which, you know, and wherever you come from, have always been a bit of an issue. I mean, Donald Trump, for example, very similar attitude to Boris. I mean, Boris, you could say, is a Trump light, you know. Absolutely no respect for anybody else who doesn't believe in what his, what his goals are. To have the, um, what's it, you know, 50 odd MPs resign, I will carry on. I'm like, it was only a matter of time when that government was like a bloody Jenga tower. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to put one as like, all maybe like Buckaroo, the old, uh, what's it game where you're trying to put various things on a mule it gets a point into just like a bang and just shook everything off well that was like the government and sooner or later he's like 
That straw's gone. That bar's gone. This guy's gone. <laughs> this guy's gone. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's what happened with this guy. And you've got Penny Mordant, Liz Truss, <laughs> you know, can you trust these people? You know, is Liz Truss politician, uh, top job material? I mean, look at the boy Nazarene um, Zagari Ratcliffe. Boris made her situation worse and then refused to pay the debt because of sanctions for so long. Well, the thing is, though, they could have paid these, uh, this debt off straight away. We should have paid it years ago. But we didn't. And a debt is not subject to sanctions because it's Iranian money going being held in our country. It should go back to the room. But his loose lips made the plight of a British dual national prisoner worse. One who can... Okay, now that we've left the European Union, we've got the cake. Now we've just found out that uh, this nice chocolate gatto, it isn't chocolate in the middle. Yes, it's proud! Let's find some way of making it a little bit sweeter to taste. And that's gonna be the problem. Uh, Rob tried to constantly push against Europe. work with the Europeans and come up with some kind of trade in the rain between them. Go back into the customs union for fuck's sake. So at least then we can do away with this Northern Ireland bollocks. Oh but that is not Brexit. To, but the likes of Honda, Toyota, BMW Mini. They need to be able to get their parts from Europe to here without any fuss or delay. Otherwise, you know what will happen? They will switch their production
to Europe. And let's just have a look at some what that's loading up. Toyota's Burniston factory. Uh, it's the Burniston factory. Three thousand eight hundred employees. That's not including supply chain employees. What happens when a car factory closes? You lose not just those three thousand employees, but you also lose other areas of, it, of the economy. You know, the trucking companies that service the uh, contracts to bring in parts to take away uh, manufactured cars. They shut up shop. So you got drivers now without work, mechanics without work. It cascades up the economy, it affects the areas quite far afield. And apparently that's a good thing, because we voted for it. I'd like to know when losing, uh, shutting an economy down was a good thing, because last time I heard it was not that good at all. I mean, the city I live in has lost most of its industry because we thought it better to make stuff in Indonesia. Why risk everything? Why leave a trading block? I think what this government needs to do now is once we've got a replacement for Bozo, uh, or Boris Johnson, Bozo, I have no respect for that guy whatsoever. Crashed our nation. First thing that they should do is call the general election. To have it done as soon as physically possible. I mean, that might put Keith Starmer, or it might put Ed Davy in control. Or it might actually put whoever the Boris's replacement is. Maybe have a coalition government. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Whoever comes in, uh, comes in, we'll have a big mess to tidy up. A big mess that I wouldn't like to have a go at.
but don't be a uh, doggy, stubborn politician. If the opposition party has a good idea, well, work with that party and put it forward, to bring it forward, to put it into action. Back in the 1970s and 1980s, yeah, things were different. I mean, I've got to go back all that far to have a respectful government. Gordon Brown was our last good Prime Minister. It all started to go shit shape with David Cameron. Like them, 
We can fire them at the ballot box. Let's get your bloody facts right. Because if she found out you were right, kudos. If she found out you were wrong and your facts were wrong, well, she would politely rip you a third a second arsehole. gets in, she'll be out of depth. I don't know much about Tom Tugan, I haven't done it. Heard of him that much. Penny Morton. Who is she? I think. price of diesel fuel and petrol. Count them both. It's 149.9 per litre. 
to a pound a litre. Yeah, take it down to there. Government mandated fuel price. You as a government, you as the uh, Chancellor, you are still going to get your fuel, your duty from your, uh, from the fuel pumps. You'll still get the same amount because people will actually buy more fuel. They will go to travel. So, people will buy more fuel. So, the oil companies win because they're selling more of this fucking stuff. The Chancellor wins because he's getting all this lovely fuel duty coming in. And maybe actually a bit more because people will actually afford to buy a little bit more fuel. which makes things better. But you know, that's that's what it is. But apparently not being a politician, you know, not being eaten educated are probably no jack shit. They seem to think they know uh, no best schools. Yeah, I prime is I know best. Are you a truck driver? Do you run the truck business? Do you run the grocery store? No. But anyway, that's something else to consider. Maybe we'll have a we will have a new uh, prime minister next this time next week. Who knows? But we'll see. But thank you for following along. And until next week, take care, be safe, be well, and look after yourself. And with this heat wave as well, make sure you drink plenty of fluids. So for now, until next time, 